Um, we're going to do something fun today. Instead of the same boring stuff about forms and, and chi sound and stuff like that. We're going to talk about grappling. Grappling's fun because, you know, it's so dangerous. So, um, let's go over the do's and don'ts first. Let's call this part one because uh, there's obviously a lot to cover with. If you see me check over to the right side of, uh, of my shoulder here, I got stuff written down so I don't uh, jumble all my words and so forth. Okay. First thing we want to go over dealing with, uh, and you know what, you can apply this regardless if you're a Wing Chun person or just a uh, regular street fighter or whatever, or a uh, grappler against grappler and so forth. So everything you can apply. Um, first thing that you want to co cover is, I'm assuming three things. One, you got a decent stance. Two, you, got, you can punch. And three, you, you know how to use a triangle. Okay, so in other words, not the fact that you just have the each keeping mouse stance. You actually know and know how to control and are aware of your center at all times. That's key. You don't know that? Go back and practice and check this video out later. Two, the punch. Not just you know the punch, that you can actually bring the heat with the punch. If you just have these little fly punches where you're trying to go fast, go back and practice. Watch this video later. And then three, triangle. Triangle is what gives you basically the balls to go in. This is where you actually apply the sticky hands um, and catch the techniques that are coming in at you. If you don't have a triangle, practice again. Okay, so that's the three main things that I'm assuming you have right now. Stance, punch, and triangle. If you have that, you can win almost everything, okay? Um, number two. Okay, dealing in the grappling situation. Robert's over there, okay? Uh, well, let's grab it up there. <laughs> scrap with the bones, okay? Um, you, you, when you, the thing to remember is, if you spar, there's two things, you have two options. You're either sparring or fighting, okay? If he's here, if we're, and he's a grappler, and I'm doing this, okay? That is sparring. If you spar and try to use this, you will get your ass kicked. Do not spar. All right? I'm not teaching you anything to spar. The difference is you're goofing off as far as I'm trying to do a technique, I'm trying to hit him a certain way, and I'm trying to, you know, just basically jump, jump back and forth. Fighting is different. I'm here. This is a fight situation. I've decided I want to kick his ass. It's time to go, go in. Okay? <coughs> so in other words, going in does not mean I'm going to be dancing around back and forth and waiting for an opening to come in. Going in, and I've decided I'm going to kick his butt and I'm going to move in. All right? We're going to talk in detail as far as how that's, that's done. So remember, rule number two, you are, don't spar. Okay? Don't do it like you're doing some kind of tournament. Don't do it where you're trying to get some points. If you do that, you will definitely lose. Uh, number three, what do we have this? Okay. Number three is very important. Remember this rule. Two structures regardless of what it is, regardless of what style they are, always have to meet head on. Okay? In other words, his force and my force, once we close the gap on each other, we have to meet. Now, what does that mean? Uh, I'll give you two perfect examples. Uh, I believe it was UFC 3, some, uh, some stroke with uh, supposedly a Wing Chun guy. He's the grappler, okay? Or a striker or whatever. I think he basically got grappled and he got pulled to the ground. What happened is, he's standing here, and his each in my stands, and he has his hands up like this. So Robert closes the gap on me, boom, like this, and I'm just standing there. Remember, rule number three, two forces have to meet. In other words, when he moves in, I have to move in. I can't have him move in and me just stay there standing, okay? Anytime, regardless of, let's say you have the greatest each in my stands, I'm standing in here. He moves in to close the gap, and I'm standing in here, you will still eat it. You will still eat it. You gotta have two forces actually meet head on and learn how to merge that properly. Otherwise, he runs, you stand, you'll get killed. Uh, what else was that? Uh, that was UFC 3, I believe. Uh, another perfect example is, uh, what was that? Waterboy, Adam Sandler. <coughs> Remember? He's like, what's your problem? What's your problem? And then Adam Sandler was like going all crazy, and he pictured that guy some, uh, as, as uh, I forgot what he picked, as, as that racing guy, right? <laughs> racing guy. So he's like, Aah! just jumps on him, and the guy's just standing there, and he just gets killed. Alright? Once again, perfect example. Don't stand still, have the guy close the gap on you. You will eat it either way, both ways. Okay? 
Four. Okay, number four. To merge a triangle, merging triangles doesn't look like this. Okay? He has, he's in whatever position he is. If I try to merge a triangle like this, right? I'm trying to go like this, I'm trying to go like this, I'm trying to kick in like this, I'm trying to kick in like this. If you're trying to merge your triangles with an attack or a fake or whatever, a kick, that is not merging the triangles. That is just you being a total puss of not learning how to close the gap. Alright? Merging, merging the triangles means my structure and his structure move in. When he moves in, I move in as well. Okay? This is, if, if I try to cheat myself by using a hand technique from this distance to try to go, you know, watch out! And then try to close in the gap with a kick, or, you know, a high fake and take him down this way, not merging the gap. You're not closing the gap in, okay? Do not use that. You gotta basically have two structures move in. He moves in, I move in, okay? Just remember that. Uh, five. So, what does that mean to merge a triangle? For example, so two forces always have to come in with, with each other in order to, to merge. Have you ever noticed, and when I give this example to you, you can check anything on YouTube as far as fights uh, on video. Everything always functions this way. If you have two forces coming in at the same time, if, I, if Robert moves in to close the gap, I move in to close the gap. If we go in at the same speed, what happens? You basically have a stalemate. All right? In other words, you neutralize each other out. Which is good if you're sparring, but remember rule number two, we're not sparring, okay? So in other words, a lot of times, if he goes down to take me down, for grapple down, and what do they normally do? They do the sprawl, right? Sprawl is uh, common way to neutralize that force. That's great if you're sparring, but you, you want to put yourself in a position so you can hit him, not so that you can basically neutralize it and you're back at, at square one again, okay? So, remember this simple rule. He moves fast. I go slow. He goes slow, I go fast. So we have to learn how to merge that correctly. If he's moving in fast, let's say he's moving in at 70 miles an hour, okay? And just to give you a raw number. He's going in at 70 miles an hour. If I close the gap at 70 also, what happens? Basically, you have, so you have the two forces colliding and meeting, but it's a big mess where neither one is at an advantage or disadvantage. If you go, if he goes fast, too fast, and you go beyond this uh, point that you can't control either, like a lot of times you see uh, he's a grappler, you go like this, and you're like here. Next thing you know, he's down, he's down here, and you're here, and you're already off balance like that. That's no good either. Okay. Merge means that if he's moving in, okay, let me give you two examples of what's wrong. He moves in, I go like this. Okay. Notice I brace back basically to to um, to deal with uh, his uh, initial force moving in. He, if he moves in like that, still no good. Two forces have to meet. It's not him moving in and me planning to move in as far as merge. He's not going here, and I'm going like this, to plan it like this. He moves in, I move in, and when I move in, the triangle is here. If my triangle feels jammed in, I'm merging this part of the triangle in order to deal with, in order to, to deal with, his, with his attack. Okay, I'm not planning that he's moving in so fast and I'm like, oh, oh, oh crap, I got caught off guard and I have to move back like that. If, I, if he moves in, I move in both and I adjust from that point in order to make the burst even. He's going in 70, I go 30, but I'm still moving in to do that. That makes sense? So in other words, he has to be, if he's going two, if he's, if he's going 70, I gotta go 30 to match it. And it works the other way around too. He's just standing there. And a lot of times you can do this uh, regardless if he's a grappler or a kicker or whatever. He's just standing there dancing around. What do you do? If I go like this, just to step in and do my attack, that's not me merging in properly. That's me, he's a stalemate, I'm a stalemate. And he's actually a more advantage at that position. So if he's dancing around like that, and I step in, no good. If he's dancing around like that, boom! I want to close the gap in there. He's going 30, I go in 70 in order to, to merge the triangles together. That's the proper way to actually deal with it. Make sure the structures move in and keep everything balanced. The speed at which you should do it is, is basically, it shouldn't be where it's a step. I mean, what does that mean? If he's there and I'm trying to merge triangles, this is not me going 70 in there. You know, that's, a, that's not me going 70 in there. That's just me stepping fast in. That doesn't mean I actually merge the triangles. Me merging the triangles is me actually me moving in. Okay? 
Uh, number six. What is that? Six. Grapple. Okay. We're, let's say we merge the triangles properly, okay? And he, he ends up going for my leg. He gets one of my legs from this, okay? The worst thing you can do if, he's a, if, he, if he, he gets your leg is, next thing you know, you're grab, grabbing him back, okay? In other words, he grapples, you grapple, you're going you're gonna to lose. That, that's not your game. You're not there to, to, to be the next uh, WWE star. You're basically, if you end up grabbing him, watch how easily he can take him down. Okay. Okay. Let's say Robert grabs our leg. Okay, and then you just you know, whatever you want to do, move, move it. I think you know he's, he's basically I'm grabbing it, and then he can pull me off, off whatever. All right. He grabs you, grab your toast. Does not work. Okay. That's a definitely bad thing to do. Second bad thing to do is this. You see this a lot. He grabs your leg. Okay. Let's say he actually has me off balance like this. And you see this a lot uh, from you, uh, Wing Chun guys. He grabs it and I'm like, boom! I'm punching him down and he's just rolling around with them and I, I'm actually knocking, knocking him down. That will not work either. Oh yeah, if he, he, if he, if he's, if he grapples you and he, he, he's got you already on one leg, and you're already off balance, and you're trying to basically try to chain punch him and try to punch him quickly, just think of it. How much, if, you, if you're leaning backwards, and you're off balance and off center, and you're trying to generate power here. Now you're on one leg, and you're trying to generate power off there. Assume for a second that your partner doesn't just want to play, play limb for you. Assume for a second he's actually a grappler who really wants to kick your ass. You know, when, when I see when you guys try to do that, and no wonder grapplers are laughing at us. <laughs> because there's, there's no way, even if he has half an effort as far as holding here and actually drives into you or pulls you away as far as dealing with it, he'll be able to take you down. All those little chain punch rain down you won't work at all. Okay? Now, uh, in part two, we're going to go more into the detail as far as how to deal, deal with the actual uh, grappling and the merge situation. But just to get you, uh, give you an idea, the chi stop part is how you deal with force, right? Um, think of it this way. We, we practice chi stop to deal with force. In other words, he comes with an incoming force and I know how to deal with it. Chi stop standing up is force. You're dealing with force. When you're on the ground, it's the same thing. It's no different. You don't need to be doing grappling in order to know how to deal with the force standing up. It's sort of like saying, well, okay, you can only sit sitting down. Like, oh, well now I'm standing up. What the hell did I do with this food? Uh, it's foreign to me. It's not. I'm standing up. I can eat. I can lie on my back. I can eat. I can do whatever I want and still and still make and still eat. So whether you, if you know sticky hands, this force here, he deals with. He doesn't attack here. Boom. This is me learning how to deal with force. Force standing up. Force standing uh, on the ground. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. If you know how to deal with that standing up, you can apply it on the ground. You don't need to, to grapple to, to be like, oh my god, what's this new new force that I can't deal with? I'm, I'm being grabbed. I have no idea what to do with that. All right. So anyway, that's part one. Uh, hopefully you remember all the uh, the little advices I gave you of do's and don'ts when you're dealing with the grappler. And uh, part two, uh, we'll get even more into the fun of it. Okay. Bye.